Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to the show. This is episode six of The Novelist. In the last episode, we uh, told Dan to go screw himself uh, since he wanted a day at the beach, and I had inferred that that meant he was just going to screw around by himself, and who cares? He should spend some time with his family. But because he wasn't at peace, it broke his rhythm, and he nearly crashed the car on the way home, spending time with his family. And that's uh, not the way I expected that to turn out. But so far, everyone's okay. So let's uh, let's continue and see what we can do. Now, at the end of the last episode, we heard that there is a phone call that is going to change some lives, probably. And the title of this chapter is The Funeral, so this can't be good, whatever it is. Dan. Big news. Got a call from Bracket Books and Eugene. Eugene. Is that a city? That does sound like a city name. Sounds familiar, anyway. And they want you to do a reading from Windsong. Maybe even some Q&A, some book signings, all that good stuff. I think you should do it. In fact, I'm going to be pretty pissed if you don't. Bracket is a big outlet, so if this goes well, orders for the new book will definitely go up. I don't need to remind you how long it's been since Trammer's Way came out. If you don't keep your name out there, no one will even notice when you finish the new book, whatever it's called. Hell, speaking of the new one, why don't you read some of it, too? Maybe the second chapter you sent. Uh, you sent me last month. That one was pretty good. Bracket Books. Eugene. The 21st. See you there. Paul. P.S. You know the long game, right? Nailing this one could mean a bigger advance on the next book. Means to an end. I have a feeling that's what I want to do for Dan already. Dan, I just got off the phone with Mom. She told me about Grandma Joe. I know we expected it sooner rather than later, but this is hitting me so much harder than when Granddad died last year. Do you remember going to Grandma Joe's house after school on Wednesdays and playing until Mom got off work? How Grandma Joe always had a surprise for us? Even if it was just cookies in the oven, she'd always time it so the whole house would smell like them when we got there. I hope the minister captures those little moments because they don't seem as little now. I wish the circumstances were different, but it will still be good to see you at the funeral. What am I saying? You probably won't even get this until after the funeral. I guess I just needed to write anyway. Love, Linda. So Anne must be her sister. Has to be. Yeah. That sucks. Yeah. Mark the 21st of this month on your calendars. For one day only, watch the world's famous Fighter Five as they scream across the sky. Witness death-defying feats of flying in a display unlike anything you've ever seen. Guaranteed to blow you away. Don't miss it. I can already see that I want to replay this game and make different choices. Like, you know, what happens if I only favor Tommy? What happens if I only favor Dan? I wonder if it's even possible to have everybody happy about everything. It probably isn't. In fact, I would actually be a little disappointed if this game did have a best ending. Because the way this family is set up and the way the story goes, I mean, someone's going to be unhappy. Yeah. And I think that's the that, that makes for good storytelling. Because 100% happiness almost never happens in reality. Call Paul first thing tomorrow morning. Any possible way to move it? Is this thing announced yet? Ooh. Can't. Oh, God. I'm thinking, what would it take for me to miss that kind of opportunity? Like, my mom's funeral would, would crush me, and I would miss... Da I would miss everything if that had to be a possibility. I don't even want to think about that, honestly. Oh, cool. But um, but there isn't much more that would get me to miss, even funeral-wise. There wouldn't be that much more that would convince me personally to miss a book signing but or book um, Q&A, that kind of thing. But on the other hand, I'm also not super close to my extended family either. So, you know, it, it sounds like Linda is super close to her grandmother... And of course, as a loving husband, he should be there for her to support her, but yeah. anyway. Yeah. I walked out to the bluff to remember Grandma Joe and say goodbye. 
And on the way back, I started thinking about what it really means to have a family, to make that your focus. She seemed to take such joy in being surrounded by her family, providing for them, taking care of them. I hope I never took that for granted. When I got back to the house, a question hit me that I can't get out of my head. What will Tommy think about Dan and me when he gets older? And what if Tommy has kids of his own? I can't even begin to think of myself as a grandmother. I haven't even been a mother for that long and I'm still feeling my way through what it means to be a good one. At least I'll always have an example. I miss you, Grandma Jo, and I'll never forget you. I promise. Yeah, she was. She is definitely close. Yeah, I've never to... had that with any of my family either. Really? I thought you were that close to your to your pap. Not really. I mean, he is a good family member, but like, we don't talk at all. Oh, uh, fair enough. He's a good family member in his distance, like. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Right now, the way things stand, that's what I need from my family. Right. My mom won't even give me that. She she texted me today. Oh, did she? You didn't tell me that. Yeah, it's, it's, it happened at work. She texted to bother me that she extended the, like, data limit for our phones. Like, that even matters to me. I barely use any of it. And she finished it off with Merry Christmas, like, Merry Christmas. It's only the fourth or the third. Yeah, like that's her Christmas gift. It's like, woohoo. Wow. Okay. I got a text last night that apparently someone else on the line already used 60% of it, so it's not my right. Christmas gift. <laughs> yeah, it's their Christmas gift, so they don't have to pay the money for an added charge. Yeah. I have to say this. I have the I have a present planned for you for Christmas. They're you will not get anything better. You are going to love the thing. I'm already excited. Ma. Because I know you so well. I've never been excited for Christmas presents. Oh, you will be excited for this. Okay. I can guarantee. I don't even know why the hell I'm talking about this on the video, but whatever. Um, I sort of want to film your reaction and put it on YouTube. <laughs> so when you unbox it, or at least get an audio recording. Because it will be some great entertaining stuff for the viewers. Anyway. Now I need to get you something better Just than what I got. It's the same day as the signing in Eugene. And Paul says they can't move it. He'll understand if I bail because he knows Linda, but Grofield is a different story. They won't give a damn why I missed it. They'll just get a memo and put it in a spreadsheet somewhere and write me off just a little bit more. And it's not just the timing. If I do the reading, I've got to get that chapter in shape. It's not even remotely ready for anyone to see it. Can't worry about what Paul says. He's my agent. He's supposed to stroke me. And what about Tommy? Tommy's just gonna have to deal without not going to his little, to his plane show. He, he yeah. his air show. It's much bigger priorities, kid. Most of you. He'll here understand knew my later. Mother. For those who didn't, I truly wish you had. She was an example for all of us. Her warmth, her caring and her smile were impossible to forget. It's still hard for me to believe she's gone. Without her, the world is... <laughs> I'm uh, leaning heavily toward giving Linda what she wants and activating Dan's compromise. Yeah. Because, okay, so we know that Linda can't write. Or at least she's not as good at it. And she's not in the position, the mental position to write well anyway. She's going to need Dan's help for this. So I bet you Dan is going to have to write the eulogy or help her write it. But then he can he can compromise. Maybe he can do like a phone Q&A or just read smaller somethings or I don't know. Yeah. Or he can spend the time getting that chapter in shape like he wants to. True. I mean, like. maybe... maybe I mean, he won't. I would 
What am I looking at here? Um, he's probably holding hands with one of the air showmen. Or he's with one of the guys from the air show. It's like... Yeah, must be. I was hoping there would be a picture of him on there or something. Anyway. <sighs> well, we'll figure out what they all want soon. I just need to find Tommy's last... Uh, last clue. Yeah. I did look at that text. The bourbon is gone. Go ahead. My mom sent it to me. So I'm thinking she thinks I was the one who blew up the data. Oh, she didn't do like a mass send to your brothers and everybody? No, she sent it to me. Interesting. Eh, your, your family is your family. I don't need yeah. to get myself involved in I it. I mean, at least, you know, certainly not publicly, because I don't know I if you want this them. stuff in the in the public. It doesn't for matter. me, it doesn't matter. For, yeah. Well, for yeah. me, it doesn't matter either, because I've talked about it enough. But okay, like, that's fair. Just... And if I'm talking about it, like... I'm talking about it, and other people right. are seeing that, and that Here will make go. it easier for them to talk about it, too. Right. I mean, that's why I've decided to be so open with this particular series, and, you know, because yeah. that's... I don't know. I, I want that shift in the channel that I want to be more open and sincere yeah. with the viewers, because honestly, this stuff is therapeutic to me. I mean, doing the videos is therapeutic to me. Very therapeutic, because God knows, do I need it somehow, since I don't want to go to an actual therapist. Oh, there we go. Okay. There's the air show. And the plane is pooping out rainbows. That's awesome. Okay, time for a memory something. Memory exploration. Let's see if I can find everybody. Ah, there is... Is that... That's ah, Linda. I think. Lynn, I'm so sorry. Tell me what I can do. Just be here for me. Okay. Well, not the bedroom. That's where I expected it to be. It's not that I don't like having fun, it's just there's a rhythm to writing, a routine, muscle memory. Trying to keep notes in a notebook isn't the same as sitting down to a oh, this was and Dan. the silence, knowing that you've got to make that typewriter make some noise. There's certainly something to be said for getting away from your work for a bit, but there's no getting away from the book this late in the game. Only a feeling that you're not working as hard as you should be. There's a busted mailbox on Bypass 66 to prove it. <laughs> Yeah. All right, so what do you want, Dan? Do some serious work on that chapter first. <sighs> if if Linda wants Dan to write the eulogy, that's what I'm favoring. But if not, if if Linda wants something else, I'm actually favor oops, I'm actually favoring Dan. Oh, okay, voice actor, don't start making me feel feelings here. I know. Ah, <laughs> uh, I've never even felt that way about a family member, and I can yeah. feel how hard it's hitting her. Well, I mean, interacting with games speaks on a different emotional level than just watching a movie or reading a book, which is... Oh, I think it's in the living room. Interesting. Yeah, I saw. I'm just seeing if there's anything else. Actually, I'm killing time so I can talk. <laughs> anyway... <laughs> Um, uh, at the conclusion of Brothers, A Tale of Two Sons, was that the name of it? Brothers, A Tale of Two Sons? Yes. Um, I probably would have lost my emotions if I didn't have a microphone in front of my face, um, because it was pretty touching. So I'm, like, that's part of the reason why Crowbeak warned me not to play this in front of a microphone, but I'm going to. We've been to. back from camping for three days, and I'm still buzzing. Before we left, I did some research and found two great hikes, and I put together enough food for us to cook every meal with a real fire instead of having to worry about hiking back to the car or going into Primeville for supplies. It was just what I needed. Sleeping under the stars, swimming in the lake, exploring new trails, even drinking a few beers by the campfire. Not a soul around but us. And then she came home to sadness. Mom. You found everything in Linda's memory. Okay, good. Oh, what if I... Okay, so what do you need? 
He needs to call and buy a ticket if he's coming to, a fun to the funeral. Yeah, I've got to have him do that. I, I can't not do that. That's got to happen. He's got to be there to support Linda. He can work on the book while he's there. I'm sure she is, honey. Is she in heaven? Ouch. Tommy is too young to understand the full implications. Like, he didn't have emotion when he delivered that line. That's yeah. that's not the actor. I think that's, you know, he's a kid. He doesn't get it yet. And he's apparently sketching himself a little sadder now. At least it's not a sad face. What, do you, what would you like, Tommy? The magazine says there's going to be tons of points. Yeah, you're not getting what you want. I'm sorry. Okay, so we are going to trigger the phone. A phone. Or the phone. This phone? This phone. Select the phone. This is Linda's resolution. Yes. And then we will do Dan's compromise off of it. Maybe he can do a little writing, you know, at night. When, after... I don't know, because he, he didn't sound like he was awfully close to her grandmother, so I, I have a feeling that he'll be able to he'll be able to get a little writing done. Yeah. Hopefully. May 8th, the... Oh, this is a different one. The Diary of Kay Williams. Hmm. wonder if it's redacted or what's going on here. May 8th, 1952, I think that's, that's actually between the first person they talked about and then the last one we've talked about, so. Jay is gone and I am alone. That's the sum of it. No other thought enters my mind. Wed 38 years, now alone. A senseless accident has taken Jay from me. What I should do with myself, I do not know. Money is no worry. Time. Time. That is the thing. There is so much of it still ahead of me. I've been blessed with health, but that blessing is now a curse. It is nothing more than the curse of time alone, without Jay. I attempt to look ahead, but cannot envision a path without Jay. For so long, I had no need to imagine one. The children do not understand why I've come to this house alone, as they cannot understand my loss. I cannot say that I feel better than I did upon arriving, for Jay is still gone. But I do feel a change. Some glimmer of a path is taking form in my mind. I cannot describe it other than a harrowing, uh, a narrowing of thought. Perhaps time alone is to be thanked, or perhaps it is something else, something unknown. Today I drove to McClellan's to buy coffee, wine, and vegetables, although I was not due to run short of those for a few days more. I confess I went to hear human voices, to be around the living. I conversed with a, simple, with a pleasant couple, and it did me no small measure of good. My first words came out as a croak, and I realized I had not spoken in days. A small reminder of my solitary days here, alone with my thoughts, thinking of Jay, staring at the sea just over the cliff, though I must confess that my gaze always drifts from the sea to the edge of the cliff. Ugh. I'm curious to know whether uh, we get to know anything about this ghost. I mean, maybe it's maybe it's for the best if we don't, but... Um, you know, I'm curious who this ghost is. We are something. That's... I mean, we must be something, because otherwise we wouldn't make an actual voice to Dan when we did things. Oh, crap. I was gonna... Yeah, I was going to compromise off Dan. Do some work on the chapter. That's this, right? Yep. Okay. Done and done. Tommy's going to just have to be disappointed. Yeah. Grown up it's, things to do. It's also a learning experience for Tommy because yeah. now he realizes... Oh. Dan couldn't bear the thought of Linda going to the funeral alone, so he bought a ticket and flew to Denver with her. The funeral was hard for Linda, but having Dan there made it easier to bear. They stayed up late the night of the funeral as Linda told Dan stories about Grandma Joe and they talked of maybe being grandparents themselves one day. Mm. 
Dan talked Paul into a compromise. He would work on the chapter and send it to Paul as soon as he could. Then Paul would try to talk Brackett into including an excerpt in their quarterly in-store preview. It wouldn't have the same impact as a personal appearance, but it would still build some awareness. That's good. When Dan told Tommy they wouldn't be able to go to the show, Tommy had a crying fit and tried to tear up the magazine. It worried his parents. He hadn't thrown a fit like that for almost a year. It was exactly the kind of thing they'd hoped to avoid by spending the summer in such a quiet, peaceful place. But as you said, it's got to be a learning experience for him. You know? As July came to an end, the Kaplan's lives had developed a pattern. Uh-oh. I don't know if that's good or bad. Dan finished his first draft, and he almost ran to the mailbox to send a copy to Paul. He knew it was good, and he wanted to show his agent that he was close to something great. If he could just keep it together a little longer, he would have a book he was proud of. <laughs> you can do it, Dan. Dan and Linda spent the weekend at a bed and breakfast. They relaxed, went hiking, and had a quiet dinner at the corner table of a small restaurant down the street. Afterward, they walked home hand in hand like they were 21 again, content and in love. Now that is some good news. And on the following Tuesday, Tommy put on an art show in the den, explaining his drawings to his parents one by one. Dan made sure to ask questions and engage his son, who was more than happy to elaborate on, the, uh, on his artistic talent. Dan and Linda clapped for each drawing. By the end of the show, Tommy was beaming. Sounds like everything's doing actually pretty well here. They still had a month left, but Dan's chances to change the course of the summer were growing fewer. But maybe we're on the right track. Maybe we'll actually be able to pull off happiness for everybody. Maybe no one's going to be super crazy famous and happy for what they want, but... Maybe it won't come crashing yeah. down either. Full I house. A friend of Dan's was coming to visit. Let's, but let's we have a goal. Let's try to not have this end as Kay Williams did. Good point. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna try to we're gonna try to at least get everyone to be not unhappy by the time this is over. Is that the same thing as being happy, just trying to not be unhappy? Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's certainly something to ponder, but we're going to ponder that and the rest of the Kaplan's decisions in tomorrow's episode. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you tomorrow for another one. Bye.